वेलकम बैक टू शिपिंग पाठशाला आई एम प्रोफेसर डी एन मौर्य इन टूडेज लेक्चर आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट द कंटेनर इम्बैलेंस एंड कंटेनर लीजिंग कमिंग फर्स्ट टू कंटेनर इम्बैलेंस लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड मीनिंग ऑफ कंटेनर इम्बैलेंस बाय एग्जाम्पल अजूम देर इज कंटेनर शिप विच लोड द कार्गो फ्राम वन पोर्ट गोज टू द सेकेंड पोर्ट एंड फ्राम द सेकेंड पोर्ट कम्स बैक टू द ओरिजिनल पोर्ट फर्स्ट पोर्ट दैट मीन्स दिस इज ए शटल सर्विस कंटेनर शिप शटलिंग ओनली बिटवीन टू पोर्ट्स लेट अस से दैट द शिप ऑफ द लेट अस से दैट कैपेसिटी ऑफ द शिप इज सिक्स थाउजेंड कंटेनर्स शिप लोड्स 5000 containers at jnpt goes to port of colombo discharges all the 5000 containers at colombo and wants to return back to jnpt while returning back the shipping line finds there are only 4000 containers available 4000 containers available means cargo available only for 4000 containers there is no much cargo available so you cannot load all the 5000 containers so the business for the ship at the port of colombo is only for 4000 export containers now what happens to 1000 containers for the ship ship cannot bring it back because that is non productive empty containers cannot be carried on board ship because this will attract the handling charges on both the side load port as well as discharge port without any revenue revenue to the shipping line so 1000 container become surplus at the port of colombo these containers are to be kept there somewhere either in the port yard or in cfs or in icd or maybe in empty yard irrespective of where the containers are kept they will attract the what we call it at ground rental it means the shipping line has to pay to the yard owner on these containers a ground rental charges which will be on the basis of let us say so many dollar per day per container or so many rupees per container per day so ship has let us say taken 4000 containers only and come back to jnpt at jnpt this discharges 4000 containers and then gets load ready for loading back for colombo now at jnpt the requirement of the container is 5000 because enough cargo is available but the shipping line has got only 4000 containers so there is shortage of 1000 container so shortage of 1000 containers means what is the drawback of this shortage the shipping line though it has got the customer it has got the volume but it cannot carry the cargo so there is a loss of business so whether surplus container at the port of colombo or shortage of container at port of jnpt both are bad for shipping line so this is known as container imbalance imbalance of containers at the port of loading as well as at the port of discharge for the numbers that is needed by the shipping line now let us say how to address this issue container imbalance can be addressed by four method first method we call it sharing of containers among shipping line lot of lines operating from each ports so the line which has got surplus container can give it to the line which has got a shortage of container here in this case what example we take to it let us say the ship which has got a surplus container after discharging at colombo port this surplus container can be taken by the other shipping line 
which has got the requirement of more container other shipping line has got more customer different types of customer the line needs more container let us say 1000 more container so this can be taken by the shipping line from the first shipping line similarly at the port of jnpt the ship which has carried 4000 containers and wants to bring 5000 containers this has got a shortage there so this can borrow 1000 container from other shipping line at jnpt which has got a surplus so this is the sharing of containers among shipping line shipping line with surplus container can pass it to the shipping line which has got a shortage of containers and vice versa and they can make payment to each other for this type of business depending upon the number of containers they give to each other okay does not mean that 1000 surplus container taken by one shipping line it could be 500 taken by one shipping line 300 by another one and 200 by the third one so in that way this can be passed to the shipping line which needs the container which has got a shortage so this is the first method of addressing the container imbalance that is what we call it sharing of containers among the shipping line second method of addressing the imbalance container imbalance is to do the marketing at the place at the port where there is a shortage of cargo it means there is surplus containers but cargo is not there so there shipping line can take up exercise and meet the customer shippers and convince them to convert their cargo which presently they move it as dry bulk or break bulk into the containerized cargo let us say there is some customer moving the rice in bags that is the break bulk so you can ask them you can convince them to move the containers to move the rice in containers similarly sugar wheat anything any break bulk cargo or dry bulk cargo which can be converted into the containerized cargo the break bulk dry bulk these two items i am talking about because what is break bulk dry bulk basic difference for this particular session the rice or let us say wheat or sugar moving in loose quantity is known as dry bulk but when we put the same thing into the bag gunny bags or let us say 20 kg 50 kg 30 kg that becomes a break bulk you can make a parcel packet gunny bag that becomes a break bulk so a lot of cargo move in the form of dry bulk as well as break bulk so you can convince them to convert into the containerized cargo cargo which can be moved in containers but this exercise will take long time and lot of money manpower and time is needed let us say by spending so much of money the shipping line succeeds to convince some of the customer to convert their dry bulk cargo or break bulk cargo to move into containers but there is a risk associated with this what is the risk risk is that the customer is not bound to come to the same shipping line he will find from the market which are the lines operating at the port who is giving the most economical rate and will try to go to that particular shipping line so the shipping line will have a loss means whatever effort is put it is of no use so this type of things can be done only by the association of shipping line something equivalent to consortium all the shipping line operating at that port can take up this exercise jointly and provide the fund in proportional to their business and then try to convince the shipper exporter to convert the cargo into containerized cargo and move into the containers this is the second method of having of adjusting the container imbalance third method of adjusting or you can say that getting rid of container imbalance is to discourage the customer 
discouraging the customer by the shipping line you have to be selective you find out who are the customers without which you can do your business you simply cannot tell them don't come to me i don't want your cargo you have to be very very diplomatic you have to find out the basics of the customer there are some shipper who will bring the container at the port at the last moment giving lot of problem creating lot of problem for the vessel planning some customer will not make the payment in time some customer will have the delay in clearing the container at the port of discharge resulting in payment of additional delay time by shipping line so identify these type of customers and in diplomatic way you can discourage them so that you don't load their cargo at the port of load which will ensure that containers do not become surplus at the port of discharge so this was the third method first method we say sharing the containers among shipping line second method marketing by the shipping line to convert the customers who are carrying who are taking the cargo in break bulk and dry bulk into the containers third one discouraging the customers which are not required by the shipping line fourth one and the most appropriate one appropriate method of container imbalance of adjusting the container imbalance is container leasing meaning of leasing is hiring like you say in general terms giving a house on lease giving a office on the lease similarly containers on the lease it means containers are given on the rent by the container owner to the person who needs it that is the shipping line so general terms the person who gives the containers we call it lesser and the person or company which takes the container we call it lessee so here lesser is the container owner and this is the shipping line now advantage of container leasing before we come to the various types of container leasing let us see what is the advantage advantage of container leasing the first advantage of container leasing that investment capital investment can be avoided when a investor is going to invest in shipping line he purchases a ship puts lot of money there and also if he has to purchase the containers then he has to again spend some money so the capital investment in purchase of containers can be avoided if the shipping line can afford to take the containers on rental basis on higher basis on lease basis why to invest so this is the one of the advantage of leasing that is investment in capex can be avoided second advantage of leasing is that repair and maintenance charges on containers can be avoided when you own the container you have to carry out the maintenance repair survey certification every time the container is loaded is given to the cfs icd for stuffing this has to be produced with a certificate it is worth for going sea that is the seaworthiness like a ship ship is seaworthiness having a seaworthiness or not similarly you see the containers whether container can be loaded on board ship or not similarly when there is a damage to the container you have to get it repaired again you have to get it surveyed certified and then only you can put the fresh cargo so lot of expenses on account of repair maintenance survey certification for containers can be avoided by the leasing third third advantage of the leasing system container leasing system is that you can be free from the problem of surplus and what is the reverse of surplus deficit shortage so shortage and surplus of the containers can be avoided by the shipping line certain season during certain period you will find the containers are required more in number and shipping line does not have so much of container so that becomes a shortage 
In certain season, we find that volume is less, less number of containers are required, but shipping line has got more containers that become surplus of the container. So this phenomena of facing shortage and surplus of containers can be avoided by the shipping line if they go for the container leasing system rather than purchasing the containers. Coming to types of container leasing, the first one is one-way lease. Under one-way lease, container is taken by the shipping line from the container owner to load the cargo at the port of load and discharge it at the port of discharge and return back the container to the container owner. So that is the one way, one voyage. Take it at load port and then bring it to the discharge port, return back container to the container owner. In this type of leasing, the charges is higher side. Charges will be higher side because the container is given on lease for a very short period. Let us say ship has got a voyage of four days. So only for four days. So the charges will be on the higher side. Second method of container leasing is trip leasing. Trip leasing means the container is taken at the port load, goes to the discharge port, from the discharge port, container is taken on board ship back to the original port. That is a trip. One way and second way. Start from one place, go to the second place, from second place come back to the first place. So this is known as trip leasing. Since the trip leasing is slightly for a higher period, the rental charges payable by the container Shipping line to the container owner will be on the lower side. Third method is short term lease. Under short term lease, containers are taken by the shipping line from the container owners for a period of let us say up to six months, three months, four months, five months, six months. So during this period, the containers can be loaded at any port and can be discharged at any port by the shipping line, by the person who has taken the containers on lease. On completion of the lease period, containers can be returned back to the container owner. Where you can return it, it will be mentioned in the contract, where to return the containers back to the container owner. Since this is for a longer period, the lease charges or higher charges will be on the lower side compared to the one-way lease or trip lease. Fourth method is long-term lease. Containers taken by the shipping line from the container owner for a long time, let us say for one year. After completion of one year, containers will be returned back to the container owner. During this period, the shipping line can load the cargo from any port and carry to any other port. Since this particular period is higher than even short term lease, the rental charges payable by the shipping line to the container owner will be further less. So this will be having the lower, lower leasing charges on container per container per day or per container per month basis. Fifth one is known as master lease. This is one of the most advantage, most, you can say this is the most advantage, advantageous to the shipping line. In this what happens, a reference number of containers are taken by the shipping line for a fixed period and then on that certain number of containers can be added when required or certain number of containers can be returned back to the container owner when required. For example, let us say shipping line has taken 20,000 containers on lease from a container owner for a period of let us say one year under master lease. So 20,000 containers at certain rate, rate is decided at the time of signing the contract. Now when the ship feels that it needs more containers because the business has grown up 
or certain period the requirement of container has gone up he can ask the container provider to add let us say 5000 containers more so the container owner will provide additional 5000 container to the to the shipping line at the same rate no difference rate will be same similarly if the shipping line feels that it has less business and does not want to use 20000 containers so it can reduce let us say by 5000 so he can ask the container owner to take back 5000 containers and they can manage only with 15000 containers so here in this one three figures are important there must be a base number certain numbers which are coming as a base number which the shipping line has to take it on lease from the container owner second the maximum number of container which can be returned back by the shipping line during the currency of this contract and third one maximum number of additional containers which can be taken by the shipping line from the container owner in both the cases whether surrendering the containers or taking the container rate will be same as applicable to the reference number of container as applicable to the base number of container so this is the master lease so five types of leasing method one way lease trip lease short term lease long term lease and master lease with this i have completed this session on container imbalance and container leasing if you find if you find the session is interesting you can subscribe it so that you can see my next upcoming video for that time till that time bye goodbye see you again